Okay, so good morning and um, welcome. Um, my name is Alessandro Gozzi and um, I'm going to very briefly give you a flavor of what we do at the IIT Center here in Rovereto. <coughs> Uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a group leader at IIT, I'll show you uh, in a little while what I do, and I'm here on behalf of the director, Stefano Fanzelli, who couldn't come. So, um, as mentioned by the previous speakers and, and my colleagues, uh, uh, the IIT is really an integral part uh, um, via this, this strong and, and tight um, um, partnership, a relationship we have you know, between these two institutions of, of the CIMEC uh, doctoral school, but all, all, also um, as part of, you know, uh, training opportunities, the research opportunities that we can offer to the students. And, and, and that's the main message I would like to deliver uh, today to, to this audience, to you guys. So what's the IIT? You, you heard it. So IIT stands for Instituto Italiano di Tecnologia, so Italian Institute of Technology. Uh, it is a, a multi-center research organization uh, um, whose who's, um, um, headquarters are there in Genoa. But there are 14 centers. Uh, 12, 12 of them uh, are in Italy, and also we have, we have two centers in, um, 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 on, the, on the east coast, uh, west coast, sorry, of the United States, so it's Harvard and, and MIT. Uh, we are the guys there, of course, you know, Center for Neuroscience and Cognitive Systems, and mentioned we have this tight partnership with CIMIC. So, um, I, you know, I, I don't have much time, so I, I, I just try to give you really a little flavor of what we do. Um, um, the main point, probably, b before going through the labs and, and briefly showing who the people are and what we do, is that IIT is multidisciplinary. So IIT uh, uh, pursues uh, three main research themes. Uh, uh, one is robotics, and the headquarters of robotics is in Genoa. Second one is nanotech, a nanotech slash neuroscience, so apply nanotech to neuroscience. And that, that, that is more distributed. And, and here, of course, we do mostly neuroscience, which is the third major theme of research. But as you can see, that, that there are also some cross contaminations between, between areas. So uh, currently, we are organized into four labs. Uh, these are four independent labs. Uh, there may be more in the future as, as our facilities back in manufacture are going to be renovated and enlarged. So in, in principle, we should have very soon more, more, PI, uh, more PI than, than now. But these are the four main labs, and I'm going to very, very briefly give you a flavor of what we do. So the first one is the brain stimulation lab. Uh, the PI is Lorella Battelli. Lorella Battelli is a psychologist, and, and she's interested in combining brain stimulation, so TMS, TDCS, you're probably familiar with these terms, and brain imaging and behavior to study visual perception and attention. And she does that using, uh, uh, as mentioned, these tools in healthy subjects, uh, where she, she tries to establish causal relationship between brain manipulations and behavior. And she also has got um, very exciting research now in stroke patients. Uh, these are the questions that Lorella's group are trying to uh, I've been trying to tackle. She's interested in understanding, uh, you know, how plastic is the visual system, both, you know, in health and, and stroke patients and disease. Secondly, uh, uh, she's been um, uh, investigating what functions can be retrained in stroke patients, and she has a major initiative there. Uh, and and the, the idea is that TMS can perhaps improve some of the lost functions, and, you know, the, uh, and, a third important research theme for, for Lorella's group is, is whether TMS can help obtain long-lasting improvements. And as mentioned, she's got very exciting data. These are the tools she's using. We mentioned you know, extensively so far, which is TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, transcranial direct current stimulations and neural navigation. And, and so we got plenty of opportunity, training opportunities here. And by the way, you can also, you could also, if, you, if interested, volunteer as part of the healthy population. So you can actually bring, you know, uh, uh, your, your actual contribution to the advancement of science. So this is what Lorella does. Uh, but as mentioned, the IAT uh, has um, also um, has got like um, um, not only the cognitive oriented research, but more theoretical uh, uh, investigational um, um, uh, efforts, basically. And this is the second lab I'm going to briefly present. The PI is um, um, the principal investigator, Stefano Fanzeri, who's also currently the director. Stefano is, is a, um, a widely recognized uh, neurocomputationalist. So he's a physicist by training. And, and uh, most of his research so, is oriented towards understanding modeling, first of all, how, for example, neuromodulation influences, 
influences uh, uh, cortical circuits. So the, the, the overall, you know, uh, overarching idea of Stefan Ruiz is basically to use mathematical models uh, of neural circuits to, to understand how these circuits encode and transmit information. So uh, it's interesting very much in neuromodulation and it's published a number of important contributions recently. Uh, a lot of modeling also of, of, of the origin and functional uh, significance of cortical oscillation, which is an emerging theme in neuroscience. Uh, another interesting contribution that you may want to look up in the literature now, there's a very widely acclaimed, acclaimed paper that has been published now. Uh, Stefano has developed a novel uh, interpretational uh, um, system that in principle allows to crack the neural code, which means basically to discover how individual neurons are involved in, in encoding behavior. And this is a, a, a multidisciplinary and, and a multi-PI effort that involves not only, you know, recording signals, but also manipulating them for optogenetic, via optogenetics and a number of tools that have been developed in neuroscience. And, and, and more, more recently, it's also been, you know, dealing with oscillation once again, especially in terms of interpreting what is the signal that is, that is encoded by these macro scale fluctuations. Of course, plenty of training opportunities in Stefano's lab which is very big. Um, third lab, it's Angelus Bifone lab. It's called uh, Magnetic Resonance Imaging. So Angelus is a physicist. Uh, Angelus has been, you know, of course, dealing a lot with MRI, but um, uh, most of his research, re research has been dealing with, uh, you know, translating fluctuations as measured with fMRI into brain nets. So the idea is that you can, like, parcelate the brain and, you know, express the communication between regions in time of you know a complex graph, and Angelo has been developing uh, refined tools to describe the organization, the intrinsic functional organization of the brain. And for example, a recent contribution, which is you know very important and notable, is the fact that the brain is of course organized into communities, so you know regions that are, that are closely connected together. And Angelo has demonstrated with new refined tools that these communities are in fact destroyed in schizophrenia, in brain disorders. And, you know, by means of this, this sort of research, we can now understand what's the significance, the macro scale significance of this, of these uh, brain uh, um, impairments. And Angelo is also a very eclectic and talented physicist and is, is ranging from, you know, brain science to like more nanotech frontier research. That's why I, I you know, mentioned that IIT is doing also a lot of nanotech. This is a cool project that I wanted to highlight. Ask, Angelo asked me to highlight, and I think it's very cool. The idea is that you know, the, these guys are, are developing methods to detect neuronal activity, direct neuronal activity, by measuring the magnetic fields that are associated to action potential generation. And this can be done via uh, nanodiamonds. Nanodiamonds are, can be used like, uh, as ultra-sensitive sensors of these uh, uh, fluctuation magnetic fields. And they hope, these guys have hope, hope actually to be able soon to, you know, to create some imaging of direct neuronal activity, which is something that, you know, it's been elusive and many people have been trying to, but so far no one has, has managed. And the, and the preliminary data Angelo showed are really encouraging. So uh, this is just, you know, another domain that is probably orthogonal to what people at CIMEC do. And this goes to show the sort of complementarity we have between CIMEC and IAT. And then there's, uh, of course, you know, Angelo as well as Lorella and Stefan has got plenty of, you know, training opportunities for master's students as well as PhD positions. And then there's the last lab, which is mine. This is uh, the latest addition to, to the center. Uh, it's called Functional Neuroimaging Lab. Uh, as mentioned, I, have, um, um, I am a biotechnologist by training, but I have PhD in physics and so in biomedical imaging. So we do a lot of imaging and our main, uh, uh, you know, purpose is to try to bridge scale, scales. So, you know, we are very good at, you know, studying molecular, cellular processes, and, and we're also very good at describing, you know, neural system, fMRI, TMS, you've seen so many things we can do and, and manipulate, but we are not very good at, you know, bridging these two levels of investigation. So our proposal is a very simple one. Perhaps if you want to, you know, narrow this, this uh, you know, this, this gap that we have, we can begin to implement this neural system mapping in simpler model organisms. And we have been using the laboratory mouse to do that. 
And that's cool because if you use the mouse, you can really casually link molecular events to you know, macro scale uh, neuronal activity. As part of our recent research, we demonstrated that in rodents in the mouse, there's a default mode network for those of you who have heard of it. So you know, the major fundamental organization of the brain is conserved. Now we are doing, we're investing a lot in understanding why connectional uh, um, impairments uh, occur in brain disorder mostly in autism we've been working and, and we can you know of course map in you know in rodent models both structure and you can see you know autism we have major structural alterations as well functional connectivity and by doing that for example we, we demonstrated that integrative regions prefrontal regions seem to be like uh, you know focally affected by a number of mutations associated to autism which is kind of an interesting and cool finding that can open new avenues, actually, for understanding what happens in these disorders. And, and the last slide I'm going to show you is what we can also do now, and this is my lab, we can manipulate locally neuronal activity and see how these focal manipulations, the neurons that we manipulated are there, and they're called dorsal rafe neurons, how, how, how they can like, affect brain-wide activity by combining, you know, this is called chemogenetics, and, and there's no manipulation tool. And fMRI, we call it chemo fMRI, and we don't know whether it is fancy enough as a name, but it gives you an idea of what we can do in terms of you know, combining different levels of manipulations. Uh, we also, of course, have, uh, even though we are the smallest lab, you know, plenty of training opportunities. So please, if you're interested in our research, uh, get back to us. And as mentioned, we are part also, many of us are faculty of the PhD school, and we have sort of, you know, a tight, uh, and, and reciprocal uh, um, um, cross, you know, talk with, with Chimic guys at any point. So I think I'm going to stop here. Thank you. And I think now it's, it's also open to questions to any of the speakers, I guess. So I'll leave it here.